Howdy folks, Coffee and Tools. This is Thursday. We usually do new tool on Thursday. This is going to be, I guess, part two of one of the new tools that has been around now that's come in. This is, of course, the engraver and or a laser cutter. And um, I did some basics on it last week on Thursday. So this Thursday, what I'm more concentrated towards is the tech end of it. Also, I wanted to talk about the price. If you use the link that we supplied below, uh, you can pick the laser machine up for about $239, which is a terrific buy right now. Especially if you want a side business or a small business or maybe even work your way up into full-time business with an engraver. There's a lot that you can do with one of these machines besides just basic engraving. But uh, what I wanted to focus on today, so what I wanted to do today was talk more about the, well, the general, the, the, nut, the numbers. This is, does 180 millimeter by 180 millimeter is the range of this machine. What is that? This is USA, you know. That's seven inches by seven inch area. So you can go up to about seven by seven is about the biggest you can engrave an area with this particular machine. Now, I'm a, an Apple user, but Lightburn will work on PC, Apple, or uh, I think even Linux machines. But, so that shouldn't hold you back, but Lightburn only gives you 30 days of a uh, trial period and then they charge for the subscription and it's a little bit it's about the same price as i think one year subscription is about the same price as the machine yeah not that great i think they've gone a little too high with what they're asking but this is about the machine not the software there is free software that you can get on the internet so that's a cool thing and i'm going to show you a little trick i did uh this morning setting this up uh i've i found an old piece of board in the uh, barn that uh, was an old cupboard door. And so what I did was I flipped it over and thought, ah, we'll just bolt her right to this because it's good to have this thing stabilized, bolt it down on, onto something. Now, mind you, uh, in the future, to do different uh, heights of different things, you could put this on rails and maybe have an adjustable rail kit because if you set the height, and I guess we're gonna call, I'm gonna call that like a 3D printer, the ZXS or something. And in which case you could raise the machine high to hit a larger object underneath the machine. This is limiting you. So yeah, you can get away from that really easily. Think outside the box, right? The other thing I did this morning was I created a lasered in a graph on the board so that I always know where my center is. So when I'm doing something in the software, I know exactly where that laser is going to uh, in, you know, engrave or whatever I'm going to be doing, but I can see from the software what's going to happen. And then I created a, I engraved a grid, <laughs> an actual grid into the board so that I can actually see it. And I'll show you the grid here for a second. So there's our grid that uh, I've uh, lasered into the board so that I have a, I have an idea as to where to place the object that I'm going to be engraving. So from last week, uh, I've finished unraveling everything here. What's on there right now is the, the light, uh, the lightest one. It's, it's the lowest power, I guess we'll call it, <laughs> diode laser. This would be the next step. This one here would be more for like glass or ceramics or something like that you wanted to do like that as opposed to uh, what I got going on here, wood right now. And the next one here, which is the highest power that they send you with the long focal point, this one here is to dig through like plywood up to like a quarter inch plywood and again, I'm giving U.S. dimensions because they're, you know, they're talking in terms of, I think it was 15 millimeter or something and about quarter inch plywood or so. And this, this will cut actually through. So you can cut a pattern out of a piece of plywood uh, to make like a modeling or something along that line. Uh, the other pieces they give you was this part here, which will hook up to a small air blower. Now you'll need a small compressor, which I uh, don't have one on hand here you'd need a small compressor to blow a little bit of air so that when you're cutting, you sort of blow the material through. I think I talked a little bit about that last time. And also, you get four of these clips which help you to tie this down to, in this case, I tied it to a board. But like I said, in the future, if, uh, if you're gonna run this machine and you wanna do different heights of objects, you might wanna get into a pair of rails or something that you can raise up or lower down so you can get over top of whatever it is to engrave. And like I said, the, the scale here. So I'm just trying to give you some tips, I guess. And there's some airline to hook up with the, the blast. They also, when you buy the kit, you get these different materials, including some lumber. And you also have a, a piece of uh, metal. 
in this case, uh, anodized aluminum metal that you can etch into for practice to set up. This one here is kind of odd. This is actually part of the setup for the this laser here, which is for, like I said, etching glass and uh, ceramic tile, that kind of cool stuff. And they also have a little one here that's really cute. I believe it is, uh, it looks like, I think it's plexiglass. And you, again, you could etch, you know, a home key or something like that and put it on your key ring so you have a, a cool thing. You've got different uh, projects that you can do. I was looking over at another website this morning, Samcraft, and he had, uh, he has a business that he runs with a small laser like this. So you can do it. Uh, but really this show here today, even to, to today, is really about this one here, the, the Arfuro uh, Laser 1, you know, that comes with the three laser heads with, for the only $239, that's a lot of equipment. What I will recommend is probably a laptop and probably a PC laptop, although I have Mac, I only use Apple, that's, that's my thing, and you can get away with Apple, but if you have PC, uh, I believe there are other free programs you can pick up for software to, to help you run this to do you know more elegant and more interesting things. But because of the graph here I have here now, I can now have, I painted a piece of glass this morning and I put some flat black on it. And I can now position that glass on my grid here and center it up really nicely and square it all off with the, with the grid that I engraved into this lumber. And I can see that now I know exactly where that laser is going to hit when I say uh, put something in for modeling that I want to do a fancy graph with. So that's part of it. The other thing was, I think I'm trying to think in U.S. terms because there were other uh, millimeters. You know, your software again can be in inches or millimeters. I always like to work in millimeters, but in engraving situation, you may not want to. That's you know a personal preference thing, and you can go either way with it. So there's the box it comes in, and you get, like you can see, there's, it's a really a fascinating machine, and there's a lot of cool things you can do with it, and for the money, you can't beat it. There's the samples, the three lasers, the machine itself. I guess the only weakness here really is the software. That has really nothing to do with the machine itself, because no matter what uh, laser engraver you might decide to buy or something, you're still going to end up with a software thing so the software issue is like you know you have, you'll have to get some software you'll have to learn the software the machine totally different thing but the nice thing is with a ferro with the laser one uh and say like uh i'll just again i'll just use uh light burn for example uh it recognizes this immediately and works with it immediately it seemed like it just it was like a no-brainer so that was you know that's good to know because uh, some software can, you know, to some machines, uh, the machine may be a problem. This one has limits, by the way. It has the stop limits on it, like a 3D printer machine would have. So that sort of eliminates a situation too. That way the home uh, situation is always in the same spot. You can change what they call the origin, where it stops, you know, out here in the middle someplace. But, but the home location is always the same and is already preset in the uh, light burn correctly so that it will go to the home position when you're done. So limit switches, like I said, really, really goes a long way. Uh, I said 15 millimeters, it was five, I think it was five millimeters worth of uh, wood cutting uh, for the, oh, for this one right here. This is the low power. These other two are both high power, like 5,500 milliwatt, but the difference between them is the focal length uh, of the focus of the laser itself. And that's what makes the difference between say this one, you know, engraving really hard glass or tile, ceramic, whatever, where this one here, you're going to be getting, cutting through uh, some, maybe some plywood. I've seen some fellows cutting some uh, one eighth wood, that sort of thing with them. And they do, they do an awesome job. You know, they, they really come up, the accuracy and the precision from a laser is, it's just what it is. It's, it's precision. You know, it's, it's pretty damn awesome. Uh, okay, guys. Hey, thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. This was part two, more of the technical side of the Afero uh, Laser One kit. And like I say, I think if you can get a deal on it right now, I think you can grab it for like $239. That's a good buy. And look at that, you, can, you know, turn it into a business. Guys that are engraving and making monograms on, uh, you know, uh, coasters and stuff like that and selling them on the internet all day long. So there's lots of potential for lots of things you can be doing with this machine. And this is like probably a beginner to inter maybe intermediate machine 
that's where it's at. But it's a good place to start if you're thinking about an engraving machine, this is a good place to go. Right here, it, you know, the software will work well with it. My, uh, the other recommendation, like I said before, was unfortunately would be PC, laptop if you have one. I've got Apple. I'm stuck with Apple. And I, I don't like Apple. Apple's okay. But with the uh, PC, you have a little bit more uh, variable free softwares and downloads that you can do. You can import a JPEG file into your Lightburn, like a, a picture type thing. Uh, make it black and white or grayscale it and then run it into the, uh, you know, the light burn and go ahead and do that. Please like, share, subscribe and uh, new tools Thursday. Uh, Monday might be new tools too. Again, I don't know. We got a lot, of, a lot of territory to cover. Also have a new project coming up. Pretty cool too. That ought to be good. But anyways, meantime, hey, over and out and I'm out of here. Yeah.